Hi, and welcome to This is My Architecture. I'm Ziv, and I'm here with Ophir for My Heritage. Hi, Ophir. Thank you for joining. Hi, Ziv. Thanks for inviting. So, Ophir, tell me about My Heritage. Sure. At My Heritage, we have the unique vision of connecting you to the most important people in the world, your family members. You start by creating a simple family tree or taking a DNA test, and we'll do the hard work of matching your data with our huge database containing billions of family tree profiles and millions of DNA samples. With it, you can make amazing discoveries about your family history. Nice. And what are we going to talk today? Today, we're going to talk about Deep Nostalgia, a feature that became an internet sensation immediately after we release it. In Deep Nostalgia, you are asked to upload an image of your ancestors, and you allow us to bring it back to life. We take the static face in a still image and we make it move, blink, and smile. And this feature was so beautiful that it made millions around the world upload photos of their loved ones, and some of them to cry after seeing their beloved family members smile for the first time. This is great. It's an amazing feature, I remember, when it went public. Uh, let's dive into the architecture. Show us how you build it. Sure. So when our user wants to animate his photo, he reaches to our API server, which is deployed on EC2 instance. And at this point, we generate a pre-signed S3 URL, mm -hmm. which the user uses directly to upload his image to S3. From there, the animation process starts. We generate a request to SQSQ, and our GPU fleet of EC2 instances consume this message from the queue and do the hard work of animating the image using deep learning techniques. So here all, all the magic has happened. Um, how do you manage this split of EC2 instances? This split is managed with an auto-scaling group that allows us to scale in and out according to the current volume of traffic. Actually, we have a GPU instances which is, has a basic on-demand capacity and spot instances right on top of it. The scale is controlled by the number of input messages in the main queue. Mm, so you are using spot instances as well. Great. And I see that uh, you design an asynchronous architecture here, and you have this SQS in the middle. Why did you choose that? This feature is asynchronous by nature. It takes several seconds to animate an image, and we don't want to keep the user delayed. Moreover, this async architecture allows us to have a highly available feature with fault tolerance. Great. So in case of a failure or spot interruption, another server can pick up the message and you never lose a request. This makes sense. And while the animation completed, what, what happened next? How do you let the user know about it? Yeah, well, when the animation completes, our GPU instances stores the resulted artifacts in the target S3 bucket. Mm -hmm. And they send a notification to, S to SQS, letting us know that it completed the status of the animation. Now our state manager consumes this message from the SQS queue and updates our state manager with the result of the animation. The user continuously pulls the status from the API server, and when he understands the animation completes, he can download the artifact using a signed CloudFront URL. Now, if the user wants to go even further and share this with his family members, most likely they will hit CloudFront cache on subsequent requests. So you mentioned that the feature went viral really fast and you had a lot of traffic. What scale are you talking about here? Yeah, in the first two weeks after the release, over 50 million animations were created by our users. This is a great scale. And you're using spot instances for the animation servers. How did you handle this uh, demand of spot capacity? Right. At this spot, we were actually using a single region, let's call it our main region, which handled all of our traffic. We were already using multiple types of GPU instances, and we were already spreading it on multiple AZs. Now, as scale rise, we wanted to even leverage further and take instances from other AWS regions. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we took our animation services and deployed them at five more AWS regions. And then we were able to scale further and use capacity pools on other AWS regions. Now, from this point, we need something to actually 
route the traffic to other regions. So we added the lambda here, which grabs the message from the input queue and does the work of routing the traffic to AWS regions according to the current spot capacity. So at this phase, we have a local SQS here, allowing our GPU instances in the main region to pull the message from here. And now we don't even need to pull it from the main region. I get it. So you could have fetch messages from other regions directly from the main queue. Why did you choose to add this Lambda function in the middle? Right. The thing is that spot instances are dynamic by nature, and we wanted to control the portion of traffic mm. that we send every region in this Lambda over here. Moreover, we wanted to process as much animations as we possibly can in this main region, because the source and target bucket reside in the main region, and we wanted to avoid inter-region traffic costs. I see, so you could also control the cost here. Did you consider any other cost optimization here? Yes, we focused on our animation services, which is the major cost aspect of this architecture. We actually wanted to see if we can use a better GPU instances for them, as we started back then with P3 instances. And recently, AWS released G5, which is a newer GPU generation, and we tried it out. It turns out that while it gives us pretty much the same performance, we were able to improve cost dramatically, leading to a significant cost saving. Thank you, Ophira, for sharing this architecture with us. Thank you, Ziv. It was a pleasure. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture. Mm -hmm.